This is James Luxon. Delighted to be joined with John Scully. John, how are you, mate? Everything's great. How are you? Good stuff. I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for joining me out in Riyadh at the moment, out in Saudi Arabia, um, preparing for a massive fight this weekend, obviously part of Arte Patebiev's team. Um, just first of all, talk to me about what it was like out in Saudi arriving out there and the the welcome you guys get over there. Um, you know, it's it's uh, the first thing I noticed is really hot. <laughs> like it's it's really hot. Like during the day, you know, you can't even go outside half the time. Um, but we came in, we kind of, uh, we came in on on uh, through the back door, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like we didn't make ourselves known. You know, we go to the gym at our own time. Nobody's there. Um, so, you know, nobody, nobody even sees us. Is there a reason for it? Is that just how you guys like to do it? Is it so there's no spectators, no, you know, nothing for you guys to get back to anybody? Yeah, of course. You know, Arthur wants to focus. You know, all fighters do, really. And, uh, you know, so there's no reason to have people constantly coming around. And, you know, like sometimes he'll be walking and, you know, some people know who he is and they stop him for pictures. And, and he, he always obliges, you know, he doesn't complain or anything. But, you know, if everybody knows he's here, then they're going to be here. There's going to be a lot of people and, and it's going to get to be problematic Absolutely. You mentioned a word there, and that's focus. Talk to me about artist focus and how he is when he's in fight mode. Is there a difference between camp Arthur and fight night Arthur? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I notice, uh, and all fighters are basically like this, uh, not just him. But, you know, you can tell some guys reach the point earlier than others do in the in the process. And I notice, like uh, like last night. We all we eat at this uh, restaurant in the hotel, and we just um, you know we go at different times, and you know I happened to be there with him, and and we sat down, and you know he really didn't didn't say much, you know, whereas normally he talks. So, being a fighter myself, I knew not to even say anything to him. You know, if he wants to talk, he'll talk, but if he doesn't want to, then we don't. I don't. Me personally, I don't engage him in conversation because uh, I know as a fighter, he's. He's got a lot of million things running through his mind, and you know I don't want to interrupt that. How important is that for you as part of the coaching team to recognize that you know when to sort of sit back and let him have his silence, essentially? Right. Oh, for sure. That's that's probably why I'm here. I mean, ultimately, you know, because I, I I remember when I first started working with him in 2016. That was part of the reason was. He wanted someone who had experience as a fighter, you know, and uh, so I guess that's me. Talking about the the camp, obviously you mentioned before that sort of switch has been flicked. He's a bit of a different person through camp. What is Arthur like in the gym? What is he? You know, some fighters can be jovial characters; they like a laugh and a joke. Some are just serious, down to business, want to train, go home, and that's it. What is Arthur like? Um, you know, I would say ninety percent. He's there to work. He's there to do what he does, you know. But uh, you know, he'll 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 engage in conversation. He'll he'll laugh at some things that are funny or whatever it is. But uh, everybody kind of knows that that's probably for the beginning of the day. Like if if we get there at five o'clock, maybe from five to five fifteen, you know, we can we can amuse ourselves a little bit. But after five fifteen, it's like okay, it's time to work, and you know, there's no more joking around. You've been in boxing a long time, John. You know, you've seen some special fighters from Roy Jones Jr. at the Golden Gloves as an amateur all the way through to Arthur now. Just how special is Arthur as a fighter? You know, he's special as a fighter, you know, because of what he brings to the table. You know, his power and his intensity and his, uh, you know, his relentlessness and all that type of thing. But for me, you know, ultimately it's his mentality. You know, he's just a, a driven single-minded you know focused individual um you know i've 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 not seen it on this level too many times you know over the years you know you, like when i was a kid i thought all fighters were like that you know i thought all professional fighters were just mental animals and just constantly training and constantly focused and they didn't they didn't do any drugs they didn't drink alcohol they didn't do any of that and you know, unfortunately, uh, that's not necessarily the case. That's not the that's not the norm, actually, and it should be. But he, uh, you know, he he takes it very seriously, a hundred percent, not ninety nine point nine. Takes it a hundred percent. 
A lot of people look at this fight with Bivol and say that this is a fighter in Bivol, a boxer, against a brawler, somebody who comes forward and is a knockout artist, obviously 20 wins, 20 KOs. Do you feel that Arta's boxing and technique are underrated? Oh, 100%. 100%. And, and that's good. Like, it's actually, it's good that they are. You know, I don't think Bivol underrates it, really. But it's good that people do because, you know, you can catch people sleeping. Uh, but I think most of the really boxing people who matter, I think they started realizing it over the last couple of years. Uh, like, I, I noticed people talking about it when he beat Joe Smith and – Everybody thought it was going to be a nuclear war. They were just going to go at it. And he, you know, he was coming in from angles and stepping to the side and he was hitting Joe from the sides. And, uh, you know, that was extremely smart boxing. And I think for a lot of people, that was the first time they realized he's a lot more than just a face first, come forward brawler. He's not that at all, really. Do you, you when you mentioned the word there earlier on was relentless, With Arta, and obviously he carries a lot of power. Although he is an extremely high level and well skilled boxer, do you think the fact that he is so relentless and the power that he carries is just, it's almost a, I suppose, a, a, almost a guarantee at times that he's going to end before the final bell? Right. Well, you know, we, we try not to think that way. Like when we train for the fights, we always train to go the distance. We always train to win on points, like always. It's We've never, in, in the eight years I've been here, I've never heard anyone say, okay, well, you know, once we hurt the guy and this and that, and we've never, we've never, sorry about that. We've never considered that. Do you think it's a, for Arthur, and for any fighter who is a big puncher, I suppose, as well, when they see their opponent hurt, that natural instinct like a shark to blood, do you think that's just in art where it's just a natural ability to go, right, I know now is my time to push on, be relentless for this moment? Oh, for sure, for sure. If you if you if you slip up even a little bit, if you stumble a little bit, even by accident, he's you know, you've made a mistake. Like he's he's waiting for that and he's gonna get on you right away. So yeah, yeah, for sure. He he's very patient. Like he's he's a patient guy. But if if you show that vulnerability, you're gonna you're gonna see him step on the gas for sure. Now I'm not gonna ask you obviously how you've been preparing for Beautiful, so I don't want you to give away the game plan or anything like that at all, John. But in terms of Beautiful, talk to me about what he does well, how good a fighter he is, and how good a fight this is in general. Oh, this is a you know a huge fight. This is a, a all time great matchup, and you know I was telling someone earlier today it's it's similar to like. In 1981, when Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard fought, I mean, they were the two best, bar none, and they were at their, you know, basic peaks. And, uh, you know, it was it's that kind of fight. It's, this is a special fight. And Bavol is a very good boxer, you know, 100%. And we know that. Um, and that's the thing. Like, you see all these fights and uh, everybody, um, you know, they talk. Like, they spend three months before the fight talking about how bad their opponent is and how horrible he is, you know? And it's like, well, what's the big deal if you beat him then? Like, like you, you spent three months telling us this guy sucks and now you want us to give you credit when you beat him. I mean, I know we're not like that. I know we don't think that way. Arthur doesn't think that way. He knows Bavol's very good and good boxer, good skills, keeps his distance very well. He's good jab, puts his combinations together. He's patient, you know, all, all that stuff. We we know that. That's that's why we're going to, you know, hopefully be successful because we're treating it like that. And, you know, so it's I think it's it's time people woke up, you know, boxing people. And, you know, it's kind of crazy to to talk negatively about your opponent so much before a fight, because me, I'm like, well. What's the big deal if you beat him then? What, why should I be excited if you win? You just spent two months telling me how terrible he is. Do you like the fact there's no, I mean, obviously in this fight, it's from both sides, but with Arte, he's not generally a trash talker. Yeah, no, he doesn't do that. No, he, that's neither, you know, I, I don't think Bavol does either, but, but yeah, Arthur wouldn't do that. He's, you know, that's, that's not, not in him at all. You mentioned a moment ago how this, or the, the magnitude of this fight, you know, they're obviously the two best at the division and, you know, two on the pound for pound list as well. Does pressure ever get to Arthur or does he 
like pressure? How does he deal with pressure? I tell you, it's a funny thing. He never really shows any difference. You know what I mean? It's hard to read him because, like, I'll give you an example. I don't know if you remember, but a few fights ago, the fight was a fight. One of the fights was postponed because Arthur had an impacted tooth, you know, which is an insane amount of pain. And yet, until the fight was canceled, I had no idea. Like in the gym, he didn't he didn't show any, you know, he was on antibiotics, I guess. He didn't show any pain. But then one day, out of nowhere, the fight was off. And they said, oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's too much for him. And I said, wow, you know, he, he hit it very well. And the same thing with the last time when the fight was canceled because of his knee. He never, he never showed any pain. He never showed that he was hurting or anything like that. So I think his mentality is is highly superior to most people. You mentioned about obviously, the last fight was postponed to obviously this date. In terms of activity for Arta, I know we've spoken before and you say how he lives such a clean life, so he lives the life of an athlete, you know. Right. But in terms of, you know, they say father time, he's, you know, pushing nearly 40 years old. He's obviously enacted the injuries. There's been a few fight postponements, things like that. Will they play a part at all in Arta and his... I suppose he's, I say his progression sounds like a silly word because obviously he's at a top level, but going forward for the rest of his career. I mean, normally you would think so. You know, I, I would say so, normally. Uh, but so far, you know, he hasn't shown that. Like he's had layoffs before and he comes in and he's, you know, just as sharp as he was. Like I thought his fight uh, with Callum last time in, in Quebec City. I thought I told him right after I said, that's the best you've ever looked as far as I can tell, you know, at this age, you, you were doing things that I've never even seen you do before. Uh, so, you know, he's just, he's unusual. He's definitely an unusual type of guy for sure. Does that go back to what we said earlier about how special a fighter after is, because he's got that ability to, like you say, come out of a career best performance in your opinion, even though he is getting older and he's coming off the back of an injury, things like that. Yeah, it's you know he's a he's just a different breed of of person, a different breed of athlete, and you know as I've said many 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 times over the last few years, athletes are lasting longer. You know you see Bernard Hopkins. I mean Bernard Hopkins at forty eight years old. I mean nine years older than Arthur is now, and he looked awesome in you know in fights at that age. Uh, so it's you know it's different. People are living longer. You know back in the day. You know, Social Security was it was age sixty five because people were old at sixty five. Now they're young; they're still young. They look young, they act young, they can still do things. So I think you know we're just we're just heading into a new era, a new generation, a new you know on, on as far as people as human beings go, people are going to be stronger longer. They're going to look better for longer, and you know it's just just going to be a different world from now on. The last question I've got for you, John, we mentioned about how good this fight is and how special this fight is for the both of them to come mm -hmm. together. But how special is it for boxing, especially in this era where, you know, we see the influencers and the YouTube and whatever else, for us to actually get this fight and it also get in the fanfare it's getting to? Right. It's We need this. Like, we need guys who are willing to step up. You know, like you had, uh, you know, Crawford and Spence. You know, they stepped up. And you need this. Like, this is, like I say, Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns, Sugar Ray Leonard and Duran, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard and Benitez. I mean, these guys, they fought each other. They wanted to know who the best was. And Arthur has always been in search of that. He's always been willing to do that. And, um, you know, I think we need more fighters who are willing to do that. And, and you know, like, a, like at 135. You have all these guys, Davis and Haney and Lomachenko, and you know, and the majority of them they have not fought each other yet. You know, and there's so many great fights to be made. Uh, you know, you would think, you would think these guys would be on the internet every day calling for the fight, just screaming at the top of their lungs that they want it. And you know, you don't see that in in this era. You mentioned about the four kings there: Hans Hagler, Leonard Duran, and the best fight in the best. I spoke to Al Bernstein about this fight the other day between Arta and Dimitri, and he said both of these fighters, you could put them in any era of yeah. light heavyweights and they they would still be up there at a top level. They wouldn't be 
you know, stuck sticking out as such. Um, again, does that just show how special both these guys are? Yeah, sure, for sure. Like, like I was telling someone yesterday, right? People fall in love with a certain era, and in their mind, you know, nobody could beat these people, right? Now, when I was coming up in the seventies and the eighties. The light heavyweights, you know, you had Yaki Lopez, you had Matthew Sa Muhammad, you know, Matthew, you know, all these guys. Now, it's awesome. And they all fought each other and they were great fights and all that stuff. But you can't tell me that Matthew Sa Muhammad is going to fight Arthur and withstand Arthur's bombs for round after round. Like, that's just insanity. And then the only person that would say that would be people from Philadelphia. You know, who love Matthew Franklin, you know, and they, they, you know, there's just no way, like, like, there's no way he's going to take those shots. The the fights with the different guys that he fought were great because he could take the shots and he could come back from it. You know, Arthur's, Arthur's power alone makes him a threat to anyone. And they had the boxing skills and the conditioning and all these type things. Uh, of course, he could fit in any era for sure. Absolutely. I mean, for, for both of them, generational in this fight, certainly a generational fight as well. John, I want to thank you very much for your time. As always, a pleasure speaking to you. I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. No worries. Anytime. Speak soon. Thank you. All right. All right, bye.